That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. It is not uncommon for our daily dose of stupid to be something that is of economic nature. It's not something that is out of the ordinary for us to look at something that economically people just don't have that basic understanding of economics and so they make a decision that is stupid. But this one, this one really takes the cake. Because the city of Montgomery just recently passed, as we were talking about just a moment ago, an occupational tax. They just essentially gave everybody a 1% pay cut because if you are working within the city limits of, of the city of Montgomery, regardless of whether you're actually living in the city or not, you just got a 1% tax cut, or you just got it, sorry, you just got a 1% pay cut because you're paying that 1% in taxes. This is what our overlords in City Hall have decided that they're going to do when it comes to this. And so a lot of people are under the misconception, and I know because I've talked to some people, people that have listened to the show before, people that I know, and, and I've heard people call in on other radio shows that are confused about the nature of this thing. They genuinely seem to think that the, because of the way that this thing has been built and the way it has been sold, that the tax doesn't affect people that live in Montgomery, that it's only to get those evil, terrible people outside the city that are driving into the city to work and then heading back to their homes in Wetumpka or Prattville or Slap Out or Eclectic or, or whatever other city that you may imagine. It's really just to get them because they're using the city's resources and not paying for them. That's the way that this thing has been built. There's several problems with that. First of all, it goes against the very foundation of our Constitution, and it has already been ruled unconstitutional on these grounds before. You do not have taxation without representation. If you're going to tax the workers of Montgomery, you have to give them a vote. So now, and, and this would be the only constitutional way to do this and to keep this law in place, if you want to have an occupational tax, then everybody that has a job within the city of Montgomery also gets a vote. They're allowed to vote in citywide elections. And even though I'd rather you just not tax me and I just vote for my own town, you know, wherever I happen to be, that's what the decision that Montgomery now needs to make. Are we going to just take money from people that get absolutely no say in how it's spent or what we're going to do with it? Or are we going to go back to only taxing our actual citizens living in the city? That's the choice that, as far as I can see, that they are faced with. But another thing that really bothers me about this is there is no definite answer on what it's supposed to be used for. They've sort of vaguely said that we're going to use it on education, but they haven't been specific about that. And they haven't said that we're exclusively going to do it here. They haven't earmarked it. And so it seems as though that this is just another money grab. I think that they say they're going to use it on education because they know that that's the least objectionable of all of the options. And so because of that, they're hoping that they'll catch less flack because they're going to use it for that. But they haven't designated it, and it looks like just another money grab. But the reason that this is such a dumb idea is because it affects both the people that are going to be working here, but it also affects prices. You see, any time something is taxed, that tax and the expense of it has to be passed along to the customer. And so when it comes to something like this, this is going to necessarily raise the prices of goods and products and services within the city limits of Montgomery. And because of that, there are going to A, be people that try to avoid it, you know, for example, let's say you run a lawn care service and you service people in the city of Montgomery and also people in surrounding cities. And right now your headquarters is in Montgomery. Well, all you would have to do is move your headquarters outside Montgomery. And then when people pay you inside the city of Montgomery, you don't have to pay the tax. So there's going to be a lot of that, but that's not even really what I'm hinting at. If you're going to actually deal with businesses that operate within the city of Montgomery, you're going to see an increase in your products as well because those things are connected. You can't just say in a vacuum, we're going to take 1% and nobody's going to see any difference or there's no good, not going to be a change economically. In the city, you have just discouraged that behavior and you've also created a market distortion which artificially raises the prices of goods, services, and products within 
the city limits. Anybody that has a job within the city limits, this is going to affect the prices of whatever it is that they are giving you or selling you. And another thing, too, that, like I said, there, there is this misunderstanding that it's only going to affect commuters. Actually, it's going to hit the poor people living here the hardest. And so it is a flat tax. It's going to affect everybody that has a job within the city of Montgomery. So it's, it's not as though it's something that is going to hit the poor harder. Some people have called this a regressive tax. I don't think that it's actually a regressive tax because it is a flat rate tax. But it is going to affect the lives of the poor people living here within the city more because let's say that you're somebody that works in the city of Montgomery but lives in Prattville, lives in Wetumpka. Well, where before you may have stopped by and got groceries or got a meal on your way back home, now that's a little bit more pricey here. So it, it actually makes far more sense to just wait until you get home, whether you head up north on I-65 or head down Wetumpka Highway. Why not just wait until you get home where it's a little bit cheaper? It's not that much further a drive. Well, that's not something that's going to be convenient for the people that are here in the city and live here. And so it affects them more. The same could be said for things like groceries, or if you're going to pick up a meal for your family, uh, if you're going to get goods and services, because like I said, with the lawn care thing, if you're living in the city of Wetumpka or the city of Prattville or the city of Millbrook, it's probably not going to affect anything dealing with your house, whether it's repairs or having people come and, and fix the lawn or whatever else it may be. It's not really going to affect you nearly as much because your house isn't in Montgomery. This is going to affect people in Montgomery more because it's going to cause their cost to go up further and those costs will be harder to escape if they're living within the city. And it might cause businesses to not start here, which also diminishes economic opportunity. Let's say that it is one of these companies that decides, ah, oh, we'll just move to Prattville or we'll move our headquarters to Millbrook or Wetumpka or somewhere else so we don't have to worry about this 1% occupational tax. Well, that means the people in the city are less likely to be able to apply for the job and get the job because they're going to be further away. They're less likely to hear about the hiring. There's a myriad of reasons why this affects the poor people living in the city and has a much more detrimental effect on their life than it does for people that are more affluent, the, the ones that are richer, and those are the ones that tend to live out in the suburbs as opposed to the inner city. And so because of that, what you're going to see is it affects them more, and it also affects them more just as a, a, an economic principle that 1% uh, of your income is, is something you're going to miss more the less money you make. For example, let's say you're living in the city and you're only making about $30,000 a year. Okay, well, that $300 that you're not going to see now, that's a much bigger impact on you than it is somebody that makes $100,000 and they make $1,000 less. That is going to have a significantly less uh, impactful shock to their, to their budget and their lifestyle than it is for the people on the poorer end of that spectrum that now are, are just working as hard as they can, just trying to get by and making $30,000, maybe $35,000 a year. That makes a far bigger impact on them than it does the rich guy. And so it actually hurts the poor and hurts those living in the city of Montgomery more than it hurts the commuters. And this will also discourage commerce because, like I said, it's a market distortion. And anytime you distort the market with an artificial price inflation, then necessarily you're going to have less people making economic exchanges. But let's just for the sake of argument, let's pretend that it only affected commuters. It would still be a bad idea. Because let's say we're, we're dealing with people that are making, you know, at least a, a decent five-figure salary or maybe even a six-figure salary. It's probably not going to hit them as hard, but, but let's say it's a middle-class family that's, that's running, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000, middle-class to maybe upper-middle-class if we're being generous. Let's talk about somebody like that. It's going to hurt the city of Montgomery more because what that is going to do if they're making fifty thousand dollars, they have five hundred or sorry, they have five five hundred dollars less. I said it right the first time. Five hundred dollars less in their budget than they did before. What is that going to take form? What exactly were they going to spend that on? Well, it was probably disposable income for them, 
which means it was something they were going to use on recreation, that sort of thing. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to happen for every family. There's a myriad of things that they could use that extra $500 for. But don't you think those are the people that are going to, if they do have a little throwing around money, where are they going to spend that? Maybe they go to the mall, they go to East Chase, they go to buy something at Best Buy, maybe they go to a nice restaurant here in Montgomery, something like Firebirds that you wouldn't have out in Prattville or you wouldn't have out in Wetumpka. Well, now what happens? They may have to, you know, cut the budget a little bit. They may have to eat in. Where's that money going to go? Probably the Walmart or the Publix in Prattville or Wetumpka. I imagine that's where that's going to go. And so it does hurt the city of Montgomery. Maybe those are the people that were going to go to a Biscuits game or go to a concert in the Impact, and they can't afford that now because the city of Montgomery has taken 1% more of their money. And because, for example, gas prices are more expensive, maybe they skedaddle on past that particular thing, or because of that they decide that it's just not worth the drive because, you know, gas costs money too. It's not worth the drive to go into Montgomery to eat out or to hang out or, or do something. So they decide that, you know, without that extra $500 uh, in their pocket a year, they, they have to make some, some cuts and some sacrifices and they have to buy those products elsewhere because they don't want to have to drive all the way to Montgomery. That's a, a kind of a frivolous expense for them. And so there's a myriad of ways, and we could do this all day and night, talking about all the different ways, all the different unintended consequences. But here's the thing that I want you to remember. This is what it really all boils down to. Because this is an economic law that is always correct. It's the equivalent, if we're talking about physics, to Newton's law of gravity. There, there really just aren't exceptions to this rule. Anytime you increase the price of something, demand for it drops. It may be slight, but when you increase the price of something, demand drops, and because demand drops, consumption drops. And this is true of anything. The reason that they do sin taxes on things like alcohol and cigarettes is because they're trying to discourage their use. The reason that a lot of the environmental wackos want to have giant taxes on utilities, like Obama said, with coal and electricity or gasoline is because they want to discourage their use. This is something that people on the right and left understand. And I want you to think about this. That's true of anything that you tax. Anytime that you artificially raise the price of something, you are discouraging whatever behavior that is being taxed. Montgomery just put a tax on working. Mull over that a little bit. What's going to happen when you tax working? It's going to discourage people from working. This is not a difficult concept for you to understand. It's real simple. And yet, because the mayor and city council seem to not understand basic economics, they don't get it. My mother always said, if you can't say something nice about somebody, then you're probably talking about a leftist. Nah, I kid. But seriously, it would really help me out if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm sure my mom would appreciate it.